So for my second presentation, I'm going to talk about George Washington and his views on becoming president. So when state after state began to ratify the Constitution, the subject of election of the first president became a rallying issue. Washington did not have the luxury of distancing himself from the situation. A variety of friends, including Count de Rochambeau, General John Armstrong, and Alexander Hamilton, urged his acceptance of this post, along with the American populace vying for his election as well. It seems that Washington was chosen for these leadership roles because of his character and also because he was a genius in the area of leadership. His colleagues and the people trusted him because he had demonstrated a noble and incorruptible character, and he had also shown himself to be an exceptional leader. So this is why I think people were trying to get him into this position. So one example of a person wanting George Washington as president is exemplified in a letter in September 1788 to Washington from Benjamin Lee when he wrote, There never was an instance when it could have been more necessary to call into exercise the wisdom, the prudence, and patriotism of the United States than in important transactions of appointing the executive and legislative branches of the new government. But, however, there were many reasons why Washington thought about declining this honor of being elected the President of the United States. So, in a letter to Henry Lee in the autumn of 1788, Washington wrote about the basic reasons why he was against accepting the office. So, these will be depicted in the following of my presentation, along with other writings from Washington to Henry Knox. So, his first argument was his old age. So when he, uh, the talk of the president began, George Washington was already 57 years old. As he mentions in his letter to Henry Lee, my advanced season of life. He had an inclination that he was too old for the post and that his time for politics and being a commander had already passed. He was already retired when the position became available and this also just shows his age and at the point in time that he was at in his life. So another reason for declining the acceptance of presidency was Washington's fear of being looked upon as inconsistent, rash, and ambitious. Washington had already retired in 1783 and thought that if he returned to office, he would be looked upon in this way. If he was going to take this office, he did not want people that he was governing over to look at him like that. He wanted to be sure that he was going back into office with the respect of both his colleagues and populace of America. So with this concern of the populace approving him, Washington also knew himself very well. And he said, though I prize, as I ought, the good opinion of my fellow citizens, yet if I know myself, I would not seek or retain popularity at the expense of one social duty or moral virtue. So he knew that he had the vote of the people and that the people liked him. He also knew, though, that he would not decide on political matters if he became president on the basis of holding this popularity. And I think that this kind of scared him. He said that he would do what my conscience informed me was right and despite all the party clamor and unjust censor, which must be expected from some. So I think he was concerned that with one vote for an issue that people may oppose or something along those lines, they would turn against him and it would lead to a bad opinion of him. And he also did not want the people to think that he would do whatever he needed to stay in power. He wanted to do what he thought was right for the country, and despite other views, would carry out the vision with the help of the rest in office. So a fourth reason Washington had doubted, had doubt of becoming president was his fear of anti-federalists opposing his selection. So when the constitution was being drafted and talks arose of the way power should be distributed, supporters of this constitution were called federalists and the opposing views were the anti-federalists. 
So the Federalists, in whom George Washington was among, supported the ratification of the Constitution because they favored a strong central government that was tied to commercial interests. On the other hand, Anti-Federalists distrusted this centralized power and favored strong states and an agrarian economy. Washington knew that he had had opposing views from these Anti-Federalists, and as Benjamin Lincoln wrote, he feared the Anti-Federalist politicians will endeavor to prevent your Excellency's acceptance of the presidency. So along with this concern of possibly being viewed as being rash, inconsistent, and ambitious, he did not want to have many people opposing him. He was concerned that the Anti-Federalists would not approve of his becoming president, and then this would in turn cause issues later on in his term. So with this, he also mentions his growing love for retirement. And I think that this was one of the main contributors to why he wanted to decline the office of presidency. I mean, can you blame him? (laughs) So after the ratification of many of the states of the Constitution, especially his own home state of Virginia, the struggle of creating a country with an established system of government was somewhat behind him. He was excited to turn away from all of the past thoughts of battlefields and assembly halls, along with the stresses of a working life, to a more relaxed one, that of his private Mount Vernon estate. So he had the opportunity, as he said, of living and dying a private citizen of my own farm. He mentions in his letter to Henry Lee that Henry Lee is among a small number of people who know my invincible attachment to domestic life, and that my sincerest wish is to continue in the enjoyment of it solely until my final hour. So this wish for a true retirement is also exemplified in the quote, I call heaven to witness that this very act would be the greatest sacrifice of my personal feelings and wishes that ever I have been called upon to make. So this again just shows how he really did not want to take this post and that if in doing so, it would be a true sacrifice for the life he desperately wanted to live. So I like how this quote shows the sacrifice Washington was willing to make for his country. And this is a true point of his character that even though he did not want to become president and that in doing so, it would make his life harder and be a life that he wasn't necessarily wanting to live at that point. um, He was considering it though and willing to do it if that's what was going to be good for his country and for the rest of the people. Another fear of Washington's was the fear that someone would see his acceptance of the presidency as a way to enrich himself and one that was filled with greed and a desire to found a dynasty. And he tries to rule this out though right away when he states, in the first place, if I have formally served the community without a wish for pecuniary compensation, it can hardly be suspected that I am a present, at present influenced by a varish schemes. So the fear was that this president could become all ruling and try to become the king that the colony so desperately fought against. Washington just wanted to reassure the people that this was not the case for him um, if he was to become president. So lastly, George Washington um, had the belief that someone could do the job better. And as he states, yet it would be no one of these motives, nor the hazard to which my former reputation might be exposed, or the terror of encountering new fatigues and troubles that would deter me from an acceptance, but a belief that some other person who has less pretense and less inclination to be excused could execute all the duties full as satisfactorily as myself. So he was unsure that he was the best choice for the good of the country. I think the sheer fact that he debated taking the post so heavily was one inclination that he thought that he was not the right man for the job. He thought that someone maybe perhaps younger or with more of a spirit to lead and most of the knowledge he held could do an equally good job. 
He did not want to go into this position not giving himself fully. And this seemed to be an issue he was having a hard time knowing if he could do. So with these reasons against accepting office and after time of deliberation, Washington wrote to Hamilton, I should unfeignedly rejoice in case the electors, by giving their votes to another person, would save me from the dreaded dilemma of being forced to accept or refuse. If that may not be, I am, in next place, earnestly desirous of searching out the truth and knowing whether there does not exist a probability that the government would be just as happily and effectively carried into execution without my aid. So this hope for the electors to give their vote to another person, however, did not pan out for Washington. In the meantime of his deliberations, Congress had set the dates concerning the election, and the new Constitution provided that the selection of the president by a vote of state electors. The date was set to cast their votes in early 1789 and soon after being counted in April. So this vast information prompted Washington to tie up his thoughts and come to a conclusion. After many letters insisting that he be president, pushing in him in that direction, and after months of debate, Washington decided to accept, accept the job and did so, stating, whatever may have been my private feelings and sentiments, I believe I cannot give a greater evidence of my sensibility for the honor they have done me than by accepting the appointment. So it seemed that Washington did not want people to think that he wasn't honored for this position they so greatly wanted him to have. So although he accepted the position, despite his inclinations, he hoped that, quote, at a convenient and early period, my services might be dispensed with and that I might be permitted once more to retire, to pass an unclouded evening after the stormy day of life in the bosom of domestic tranquility. So it's funny that even after his acceptance, there are still doubts in his mind, and he still is looking for a way to get out of his post if possible or as quickly as possible. And some more is just 30 days before his inauguration, Washington sends a letter to Henry Knox. And in this letter, he writes that my movements to the chair of government will be accompanied with feelings not unlike a culprit who is going to the place of his execution. Quit a powerful a body for an ocean of difficulties without that competency of political skill abilities and inclination necessary to manage the helm. Integrity and firmness is all that I can promise. So I like how this shows that even though he accepted the position, he was not completely happy with it, and he did it for the duty of his country. He says in it that he feels he hasn't the political skill or the ability or even the inclination, but he insists to lead. And he fears terribly that he risks his good name in assuming the presidency. I think that this was a lot of him to give up. I think these letters that he writes gives us great insight to how he was actually feeling during all of this, and just the fact that he really did not want to become president at all. So overall, this presentation dove into the mind of George Washington in the late months of 1788 and early months of 1779. Washington was very skeptical in accepting to become the first president of the United States. These reasons included his old age, love of retirement, opposing anti-federalist, fear of being considered rash and ambitious, and the belief that someone else could do the job better. Despite all of this, however, he still accepted the job. I think that Although as much as he despised wanting to become president, he despised more letting the people of his country down. So to him, becoming president was a burden that he did not want to embark on. However, he was loved by so many and the peer pressure of his fellow citizens and colleagues pressured him into accepting the position. So George Washington, despite all his doubts, 
and want to not engage in office, continuing on to be a great leader and first president of the United States of America. Thank you.